know, somebody asked me a question <laughs> which kind of is leading up to this mess here. But he asked about disposing of wood ashes. He burns firewood and he wanted to know if it was feasible to put wood ashes on the garden. Now, uh, I've heard this before from people. And in fact, there was one guy uh, who talked about this that actually worked in a soil testing lab. And it surprised me because adding wood ashes in a garden can actually make the soil like concrete. It can, can really harden it up, particularly if there's any clays in the soil, which most soil has got clay to a certain degree. But there's actually a, a recipe of a mixture of clay and wood ashes and salt that was used for chinking commonly because it gets hard, you know, it gets like a mortar. So no, I wouldn't put wood ashes in the garden. I actually sometimes I'll spread them on the driveway because it will make it hard. You know, it'll kind of bind it up. And in the garden, you know, like like he had mentioned about wood ashes being used for to make lye. Well, okay, what's he going to do in the garden? You know, no good. But there again, it depends on the kind of wood because like for making lye, you're using hardwood ashes. You're not using like pine ashes. But like I say, if you got any clays, uh, wood ashes would just be a nightmare. Uh, clays are bad for guarding material anyway. This is clay I'm digging out from where I'm digging the root cellar. And it's nice clay, but it would be horrible for in a garden. Uh, the soil around here is, well, okay, this, I just dug out from right back here. This is the topsoil around here. Well, there you can see, you got a nice angle worm right there. Now, to get, you know, like there's, there's a layer of this, like a foot and a half, maybe two feet some places. Then you get into pure sand. And there'll be a layer of that, and then under that sand there'll be clay. Then you go further down, you get into the water-bearing sand. But it's layered like that. Here. Now to get soil like this takes hundreds if not thousands of years. You know, it's leaves and grass and twigs falling down and breaking down over time. You know, it just takes a lot of time. This is actually horse manure that has broken down for a long time. And it, it, you can, you can, there's a big difference because it's really light, but this is what I add into, you know, my topsoil in my garden is like this. And I add this in to make it more, it breaks up easier, you know, you can till it much easier. And that's an important thing. Though I will take this stuff, which is relatively fresh horse manure, and I will use it in the garden, but I use it between the rows. I throw it down and till it in and let it work toward the plants and the plants work toward it. If you put this all over your garden, dig it in and then try to plant, Nothing's going to work. It, nothing will come up. It'll kill it. Uh, it's too much. Uh, I've, I've seen many examples of that. Even where people thought that they had this stuff and they dig in too much of it, it'll kill the plants. You know, they just can't handle that much. So, like I say, it takes time. Now, there's a thing I see, and I only see on YouTube, but I see more and more of it. People get into gardening 
who haven't gardened before or have done little, very little gardening, but all of a sudden they get the, the idea they're going to feed themselves out of this garden. So the first thing they do is make these raised beds. Like I said, I think it's a YouTube thing. I haven't seen anybody in real life actually making raised beds. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, they make these raised beds and they dump in crap like this and bark and wood shavings. Uh, okay, I'll talk about the wood shavings. You know, people uh, constantly with uh, throwing in the wood shavings and sawdust and think this is going to do good in the garden, and it really doesn't. It wicks all your moisture. It takes forever for that stuff to break down. Here's, you know, like I say, unless, <laughs> depends on what you're trying to go. This is from an area where I've been cutting wood for the last five, six years. So it's sawdust. You know, this is all sawdust. And it's gradually rotten down. But still, the only thing that grows there is mushrooms. So unless you're making raised beds to raise mushrooms, it isn't going to do you much good. You know, by the time this breaks down, the wood in your raised bed is going to be rotten and falling down, and maybe it'll do some good to the soil. But throwing crap like that in. Like here's a, a piece of wood that was laying there again. Nothing but these mosses and leachens growing on there. You know, the wood is still solid inside. You know, that it takes a long time. Uh, grass and leaves break down quicker, but even they take a long time. It's not something you can just throw this stuff together and think you're instantly going to get good soil. And plus, you, you put these raised beds way off the ground. There's a place for raised beds. In my mind, if somebody uh, is having problems with mobility and can't actually get around well, uh, and you want a garden, yeah, it makes sense to get it up where you can get at it. But the moment you put them up like that, it makes it very difficult to till, but as long as, you know, there's limitations to what you can do in a raised bed, though people seem to think that's the thing to go with, but, so they make these raised beds and they throw in crap like this, and a bunch of wood shavings, and then on top, they'll throw some wood, some decent potting soil, really, is what it is, which is, uh, you know, a lot like this mixed with this, you know. <laughs> and a lot of moss dug in there. Well, that'll soon be exhausted, and that stuff underneath isn't going to break down in time to do any good. Like I say, that, that whole raised bed thing is going to fall apart long before that material you've got underneath. That's just taking up space. You can just about throw rocks in there. It isn't going to do you any good for a long time, unless, like I say, you plan on growing mushrooms. But it's one of them things that I see all the time on YouTube. There are things that people do that are only done on YouTube. And, and somebody, like if they're going to get in the garden, the first thing they'll do is they'll look and see what people are doing on YouTube. Well, they're doing this crazy raised bed thing. I know a lot of people do it, and it's a good effort. But unless there's a reason for doing it, just dig up a piece of ground and forget about all this hocus pocus stuff. You know, find yourself some some good rotten manure, dig it in. You know, a little bit of wood shavings isn't gonna hurt. Well, if you get too much in here, it just wicks away the moisture. And like I say, it'll take forever for that to break down. You know, I, you can still see in this stuff, the sawdust. You know, it's good enough to grow mushrooms, but... You know, ten years from now, this will be really good soil. But now, 
and then you know it's going to grow mushrooms for a while and then eventually it's going to start growing weeds about that time a little after the weeds start then maybe it'll be good soil but there are theories that people have that just baffle me but it's good that people garden but you have to, to you know, you, there's no way you could build those things. It, it's just cost prohibitive to, to build a raised bed. Like I say, it'll fall down before it'll do any good. You can't be using treated wood. You know, you've got arsenic and whatnot in that. If you were to build it out of wood and pine tar the crap out of it, but... You won't see me running any raised beds. You know, if you had very uneven sloped ground where you thought this was necessary, then you're better off doing a terracing kind of thing. But it's always something I laugh at whenever I see people spending a lot of money and a lot of time and doing a lot of work to make raised beds that are gonna raise them very little food that will never pay for themselves. It looks good, it makes good videos, but it's just not cost effective. And like I said, very hard to maintain. You can't till in that thing. It would be very awkward. And that's what this stuff needs. You know, you put this stuff in and you till her in. Get her in down where it'll do some good. Where the worms are. You know, even this, you know, this is kind of like what that potting soil is. It's more like I say a combination of this and this, and they call that garden soil. But even this is, is too light, it would dry out too fast. But, doesn't matter to me. But okay, to answer the question, no, I wouldn't put <laughs> ashes on my garden. And I wouldn't put wood shavings on my garden. They would, if you had really hard clay soils, like if it was like this, then you're fighting a losing battle anyway. By mixing in some of this it would help keep this from, from binding up. You know, it would, it would do some good, but like I say, it, it's like a wick and take a long time to break down. You know, you're digging in this clay. Let's see if I can find, I find, you know, it's kind of laid down in layers, but I constantly run into things that are like almost fossils. But there'd be like, like here's a little, you know, you probably won't see it. This is like eight feet down. And here is a leaf stem that still hasn't broken down. You know, it's kind of preserved in this clay. Yeah, you know, right here is the border between the, the sand layer and the clay layer. But down there, you don't find no worms, you don't find nothing. It's just pure clay. But the layers are interesting. But... To make good soil takes, you know, I could combine all these together, it'd be fine soil. But, <laughs> you can't expect to have bark and sticks and stuff break down in a year. It takes way longer than that. But it's funny. I see it all the time. And the idea of putting them raised beds and then putting all this garbage in underneath and this thin layer of topsoil on top, you're isolating your growing area from the earth. You really, you want it to be in contact. If you had one constant tower, well, I shouldn't get into that, there I'm talking dead. I, another thing I see, but only again on YouTube, is people with their potato towers. 
potatoes don't want to grow in towers. Potatoes want to grow in the ground. <laughs> YouTube is not the place to get gardening advice. So actually, don't even listen to me, but use some common sense. You need dirt. You can't make dirt. You ain't going to live long enough to make dirt. Takes hundreds and thousands of years. Well, that's my rant for the day. And I know it's going to piss people off. There's just people who are really into this raised bed gardening. But to my mind, it's a lot of hogwash. Get it down in the dirt where it belongs. But they make good videos. Picturesque, so to speak. But a hell of a waste of time and effort.